Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 166, which is a follow-up of 164 and 165, which is my antenna testing of the antennas for the uh, Bofang UV5R handheld radio. Well, I did. I compiled my results that I had in the field, and I found a few small mistakes that didn't change the results. And I was going to try to post that in the description, but I couldn't get the formatting right because it's an Excel spreadsheet and tried to convert. Well, anyway, I didn't get it in. So I want to show you on the screen the test results. And like I said, I had a few minor corrections, but it, the end results were the same. And here we are. And I'm going to hold it up as best as I can. I'm going to leave it there for a little while so you can stop your recording and look at it. And then I'll start explaining it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get a little pointer here. I'll use an antenna for my pointer. Okay. Over here we have the, the channel number of my receiver right here uh, which is not important to you now one thing I did add to this chart which is very important is get my orientation correct is over here is my oh, pointer is not working over here is the distance from where I was at to the repeater and I sorted on that column so the distance is increasing over here is the number of hits that I made on that repeater with the various antennas and then back over here as I said is the um, channel number down here trying to show this the best I can is the number of hits per antenna on the various repeaters and the bottom the length of the antenna which to me is important now so what you'll see is for instance the stock antenna which is the first column had four hits and it's 4.5 inches the next one over is the NA701 which is just um, a little bit longer than the stock antenna but um, it didn't improve the extra link didn't improve the performance so I was kind of disappointed there then we get over here we get the two long antennas which did the best this one actually hit one more than I had reported before. It hit six. And then we got the little stubby antenna that's only one and a half inches and it only hit three of the repeaters. And you can see that its range maxed out at about uh, four miles. I don't know why I couldn't hit that one uh, right there. That should have been a hit, but it, I didn't record a hit. Now the other thing is, you'll see a couple of repeaters with no hits. These down here are kind of understandable. They're pretty far away, 25 miles, 30 miles. That's kind of understandable. The two long antennas uh, hit a repeater that was at 15 miles and 10 miles. I got a miss here. Again, don't understand that. Maybe conditions. I would suspect that this should have been a hit. So that would have given it a tie. So it appears kind of in general that the longer the antenna, the more range you're going to get out of the antenna. Now, let's take a look at the antennas themselves again in a little more detail. I had one comment from my previous video about uh, the antennas and whether uh, some of them required an adapter to work on the Bofang radio. 
Because, as you recall from one of my previous shows, the Bofang radio has a reverse connector than the typical radios that use this MSA, yes, MSA connector. So that kind of throws out using some antennas that were built for those other radios. But what MFJ has done, and the uh, three antennas that I got from MFJ, and you can do yourself, on other antennas is, and I don't think it'll show up, now this one, this is the long not flexible antenna which is the 1717SFZ. Um, this one, I don't know if it'll show up, does not appear to require an adapter. So this is a straight connection to your radio. That's Unlike the two other antennas which are probably originally built for many of the other radios that have a different connector. And I don't think you can see this but if you look real close right about there is an adapter that converts the um, the, and I can't remember if it's female or male, but anyway, it converts it to the opposite sex. And, uh, and that adapter was, is put on by MFJ or whoever makes the antennas for them. And it's not easy to get off. Matter of fact, I tried to get it off without, uh, you know, putting nicks and marks on it. I couldn't get it off. So it's in there very good. But there is an adapter there. That's just a little tiny piece, little tiny piece right here. And like I said, you can buy those adapters for for other antennas that you have already that have the wrong gender, the same SMA connector, but it's the wrong gender. So you can buy those. So this antenna from MFJ and the little stubby antenna, and I can't get sharp enough picture there but it's got that little adapter right there about the thickness of my finger so it does have to answer that question it does have an adapter so the test results were as stated before they didn't change the numbers changed slightly the uh, two long antennas had the maximum range and they uh, scored considerable more hits than uh, and they were the shorter antennas were getting about they got up to as you can see with the way I've got it sorted now they got up to about four miles and then they quit right at four miles six miles and beyond they could not hit the longer antennas made it up to about 15 miles and these numbers are not real accurate. They're kind of a guess looking at a map. Um, so they're not, uh, not real accurate. Oh, yeah, and the, the uh, NA701 uh, does not require an adapter, so it's built for the radio. So that doesn't have an adapter. And I was, like I say, I was kind of disappointed um, with, so you can see it is considerably taller than the stock antenna and I thought it would be a, would do a lot better but it didn't it's basically a stock antenna now the other thing that one of my uh, subscribers pointed out was that a lot of times and this one especially because this is very popular a lot of times these will be cloned and the clones are not as good as the original so I don't know, you know, it's very easy to, to clone this. I don't know if this is an original or what. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the test results. This might be a clone and it might not be as high a quality as the original one. And there's really no way of telling because all the stuff comes from China. So we don't know. Um, so that's kind of the update. Like I say, 
the the guy, and I'll try to show this diagonally, this long guy, which is 15 and a half inches. Uh, it's kind of unwieldy using it on your HT, but it does give you a lot of range, and it's flexible. And so, um, and this is the MFJ 1717S. Now, the other one from MFJ, this is a super long one, and there are longer ones. There are telescopic ones that will go out to like almost four feet long, three three to four feet long, and and they do better. But boy, I'd be concerned about breaking off the connection on the. Oh, speaking of connections, the one thing I did notice about a couple of, let's see if I can screw this on real quick. Okay, that one's not a problem. And what I was getting ready to say is the snugness right here. This one, and this antenna, this antenna does not have an adapter. And this is the 1717 SFZ. Does not have a an adapter, a little adapter on the end, plus it fits snug up against the radio, chassis, case, cover, whatever. Now, but if I go to this one, which is the one I like, put it on here. This has an adapter. And I don't know if you can see it now. You can't really see it. But there is a very, very slight gap. It doesn't fit snug. It bottoms out before it fits snug. Now, I've seen other videos on YouTube where people have antennas that have similar problems. And that it's pretty close, but it's not snug. So there's a little bit of flex there that could damage the connector. And what I've seen other people do is get an O-ring and take this off and take and put an o-ring over the end here and that acts as a spacer to make when you screw the antenna in to make it tight so it's not hanging in that little stub there with no support from this plastic base so I've seen that done it apparently corrects the problem but like I say this one and the, all the ones from MSJ that have the adapter, which is um, those two, the stubby and the, the only, um, we don't fit snug and you need to add a little uh, washer or something, O-ring, to snug them up. So the winner was this long guy, the 1717S, and the one that came in right in on top of it <clears throat> uh, was the, and it's longer, was this guy, but you know, what's the purpose of this? I don't get it. Are you kidding? <laughs> you know, this thing's always near, it's never going to be straight. It's always going to be bent. Now, maybe it's like you can use it when you're, you know, inside a car or something, not driving. You don't want to use it driving. That's, to me, that's a no no. But if you're a passenger and you're in a car or vehicle and you want to use your HT, you could, <laughs> you could use this guy and stick it out the window and rot it out the window and maybe get a better range. I don't know. You know, this is it's kind of a bizarre antenna. I've never seen one like this. But anyway, it came in uh, second and probably tied for first. Again, conditions were changing a little bit. So that was the MFJ 1770 SFZ. So that's a cool antenna, but it's a weird design. So anyway, uh, if you have any comments, please leave comments. Um, there's a lot of information about antennas for the BOFA, and there's a lot of antennas. I saw in one of the users groups, I saw a review where the guys did some testing, and I think he had like 15 or 20 antennas that he tested. So there's a lot of antennas out there. And it's like I say, he even tested telescopic antennas that, you know, were like 42 inches. It's kind of scary to have a 42-inch antenna hanging on the end of your HT, huh? So, I don't know. so anyway, if um, you enjoyed the show, give me a thumbs up. 
and if you didn't, eh, don't give me anything, okay? No, no thumbs down. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want to do. But leave comments and subscribe. Uh, we're about within 12 subscribers of reaching our goal of 750, which we're going to give away a prize. And for those who that subscribe and send me an email, see show number 146, is it? Yeah, it's one of those shows about my contest. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.